Okay, here we are. Unit 5, open response, question 2. Uh, this one should be real quick. Uh, it's I don't even think we have to write any equations. I don't quite remember, but um, I think uh, this is a really short one. I can see my very few slides right here in the sidebar. Uh, so, so this is a ball is thrown toward the ground. The figure shows the direction of the ball before it reaches the ground and the direction of the ball after it bounces off the ground. And after the bounce, the ball leaves the ground with the same speed it had before the bounce. Okay, so that's you know physically very unlikely, but it makes our problem nice and easy. Okay, it's so so the velocity here. Let's say that's a velocity vector right there, and and uh, and this is the incoming velocity vector. They are the same length as each other, right? This ball here has you know whatever if it's five meters a second. This ball here is going five meters per second like that. Okay, so. Um, the angle between the ground is, is theta naught before and after, so that angle is the same as that angle, and the ball bounces off the ground. But the positive directions are indicated right here, right? And each grid below represents a component of the change in momentum of the ball. Okay, so let's let's um let's refer to these vectors. In fact, let me just draw some for you to help really visualize what's going on here. Now let's 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 draw some momentum vectors. Let's draw some momentum vectors in red, right? So, so uh, I'm just going to choose an arbitrary length. I'll just go the same as that arrow there, right? So there's a momentum vector before, and uh, and and it's got a length and um, um, I don't know what I drew a few centimeters there. I'm going to try to draw. This is the same thing, right? It's the same length, and I don't know if I'm drawing it exactly the same length, but I'm trying to. Those are momentum vectors. Looks a little bit shorter, doesn't it? Um, these are momentum vectors, and they're meant to be the same length, even if they're not, right? And so this, the quantity of momentum here is the same as the quantity of momentum there. How do I know that? Well, neither the mass changed, nor the velocity changed, right? So neither the mass nor the velocity changed. So the total quantity of momentum did not change. However, momentum is a vector, boom, and boom, momentum is a vector, and, and so the direction of the momentum changed, but the quantity did not. So going down here, each grid below represents a component of the change in momentum of the ball as a result of the bounce. On each grid, draw a vector arrow to indicate the direction and magnitude of the change in momentum of the ball as a result of the bounce. If there's no change in a given component, write no change. Okay, well think about this. This ball has, let me go to a different color here, um, I don't know, something beautiful like that, right? This ball has x-axis velocity. This, uh, let me try that again. This ball has x-axis momentum, about like that. This ball has x-axis momentum, like that. How do those numbers compare? If the red arrows are the same length and the angles are the same, those green vectors are the same length as each other. I can see with my eye that I did not quite draw it that way, but but I don't think it takes much to convince you that the velocity didn't change and the angles didn't change. So that sideways speed is the same as that sideways speed. So the sideways momentum did not change. Okay? So the horizontal component of the momentum, well, I love when this happens, no change. Okay. What about the vertical component of the momentum? Well, look, so let me go to a different color here, um, something purplish maybe. Here's the vertical, oh, I just changed the letters, uh, sorry. Um, 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 am I still in my arrow? Yes, still at arrow, and I go purple, right? So what about the vertical component of the momentum? So it was like this, just before the hit, uh, it, it was, it, it had a vertical momentum like that, a y-axis momentum like that, and then after the bounce, it had a y-axis momentum like that. Right? So we don't know these numbers, but let's say this is a negative 2, and that's a positive 2. Or any number, whatever, negative 3 and positive 3. We, they're the same as each other, but in different directions. And we, I, re I recall vividly doing this with you guys um, and saying, you know, I even drew a number line on the board, and I said, remember your signs or some such. And um, if this is negative 3 and this is positive 3, the change in momentum would not be 3. It would be 6, right? The difference between negative 3 and positive 3 is 6. Right? 
bounces result in big momentum changes. So did the momentum change on the y-axis? It certainly did. The momentum was down, and then after the bounce, the momentum was up. So was there a change in momentum? There was indeed. And um, I, I would, uh, right here, I would draw a nice big honking arrow to represent that you understand there's a big momentum change, this plus that, right? The change in momentum is the final state minus the initial state. So it's the final state, let's say, you know, the, let's say the final state, I'm just making numbers up, there are no numbers here clearly, but if the final state of the vertical momentum is positive three units of momentum, I'm dropping units just to save time, positive three units of momentum, momentum and the difference, the difference is the change, so minus negative three units of momentum, that's clearly six units of momentum, so I, uh, I, would, I would do this. The vertical component of the momentum don't do it one or two or three high. Show them you understand it's a big change by going almost to the top or even right to the top. You could do that right to the top of, of the grid they've given you to show you to show them you know it's not just a little bit of a change. Um, it's arbitrary. So we've got no numbers. That makes it a little bit tricky because there's no numbers. And so you it says um, uh, the relative magnitude of the change. Okay, well, so you know, I'm just drawing it nice and big compared to the arrows that are up there. Okay, so so there we go. We're 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 headed for success here. Um, and then this is you know how many times have we talked about this? Uh, with all the super balls I have bouncing around the room, a ball of mass m is released from a height above the ground. The ball reaches the ground. It bounces back, travels to a height above the ground, as shown in the figure. In a clear, coherent paragraph length response that may also contain equations and drawings, explain using the momentum and energy, why h2 is less than h1. Okay, well, um, why doesn't it come as high? We, we just said it. In fact, I said it by mistake in open five, in, in unit 5, open response Q1, as an example. I said, remember dropping a, I said, think about dropping a tennis ball or some such. It's the same thing here, right? So, um, uh, 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 when the ball is first dropped, when the ball is first dropped, it has P-E gravitation, which, as it descends, make that go away, which as it, uh, which as it descends, turns into kinetic energy, okay? In impacting the floor, in impacting the floor, the ball's shape is momentarily changed. Um, it undergoes a deformation. There's that word again, deform. To the, 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 the material gets deformed. It gets pushed, um, it gets bent. It undergoes a deformation of material, which results in heating. That same thing we said before. Results in heating um, and loss of mechanical energy. Ah, haste makes waste. And mechanical energy, okay? Um, uh, this loss of mechanical energy, this loss of mechanical energy to heat results in a lesser final PE gravitation uh, results in a, a lesser final gravitational potential energy and therefore a lesser height. Right? That's it. That's it. So it's the same thing as those blocks bouncing off of each other in the previous problem, right? They bounced off of each other, but just because they bounced off of each other, that does not mean it's elastic. It's an inelastic collision uh, if material gets deformed, again, because of heat losses. And that's the end of that question. I found these two questions very approachable and very doable. They went quickly for me, and I hope you understand what's going on. Any questions, email me or text me on Remind or anything like that, and I'll get back to you real soon. All right. Um, talk to you guys soon. Miss you. Bye.
unit five O R two. Screen recording.